Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. So today we're gonna see how to make an Aurora Borealis or also called Northern Lights in Unity. So it should be simple enough for all of you to understand easily how it works and I'll try to go as slow as possible. And also we won't need to create any particles this time. So if you are more interested into particles, well, sorry, <laughs> this time we're gonna be more focused on how to make shaders in Shaderforge. So let's get started. So first of all, let's check what Aurora Borealis actually look like. I know all of you have already heard about it or at least seen them in photographies, but just to make sure, as it's always good to take references anyway. So let's just pick a few random examples. Like those ones are good. Um, this maybe. This one looks good too. And let's take this one. Okay. So let's see how we can make that in Unity. So first of all, you can see that they have very soft edges at the bottom. And then you can see that they have like little indentations, like little bars in them. And they also have different colors. Most of them at least have like green and purples in them. And well, I prefer this kind of color, so I'm not too much into green, I prefer blues, but this one too. So you can see that they have like little lines here and then they have those big lines here. So let's see how we can make that. The way we'll make this is by taking a simple plane, which we created here in Maya and then we'll just animate it in shader. So first of all, let's make the plane here. And let's say I want it to be wide. Let's say, I don't know, 25. We'll change that in Unity anyway, but maybe 20 and maybe to eight. Okay. And I don't want any eight subdivisions, but I want a lot, maybe even more, with, with subdivisions. So how it will work is that we will have a texture, which will make it in Photoshop in a bit, that will scroll over this mesh. And that texture will make those vertices here, those lines, those edges, move up and down. So that when we look at it from a certain perspective, let's, let's do this already. Uh, a little position, it's in X90, so that we will see it wriggle a bit like that. So I think we are done in Maya, we can just export that, should be fine. Uh, export selection, and I want it to be into sets. Oh yeah, let's create folders, let's call it Aurora. And one folder for this meshes. I just call it our plane. In FBX should be fine. Okay. So let's just take our mesh here. Our plane, but not in game, but in scene. And yeah. Okay. So first of all, let's put it in zero zero zero. That was a bit too far. Okay. So. Let's just see. It looks very, very small. Yeah, you can see the camera is there, so it's very, very small. So just to make sure. Yeah, that's a lot better already. Because we wouldn't see it in the game. It wasn't. So yeah, first of all, we see that the basic shader occludes this side. So we'll have to make a shader that's double-sided. Okay. So let's create this shader. Create a new folder, shader, and create new folder. Uh, no, create new shader, not folder. We have enough folders for now. And let's just call it Aurora. Replace with shader forge. Yes. And let's start it. So, first of all, we need a texture. So, T, texture set. And let's call it 
mix. We'll see why in a bit. Then texture to D, and then. I think it's be better if we start with the texture first. So let's just create a new. Uh, what size should it be? Since we'll be playing with vertices, and since it's not an act for an actual game, it's fine to do a 50, a uh, 5, 12. But in general, I would advise against it, but in this case, it should be fine. So just so that we get a nice render for it. So we'll create our first texture. So this one will be how far the vertices are displaced on the mesh. So here, let's create a texture that at zero, the vertices will stay here. But if it's white in the texture, the mesh up oh, the edges will move like this. So let's do this. We just need to create a new layer. And hmm. I'd say maybe let's have just one big. Whoop, maybe a bit too big. Here. One big stroke. And maybe just to make it a bit more soft, let's add some Gaussian blur. Not too soft though. Okay, sounds good. Just to make sure here, on, oops, control A, crop. Make sure the edges are softened correctly. And let's just save this as a TGA. Let's go here into Aura, copy the address. And let's create a new shader. Oh, this time it's a folder. <laughs> Textures. And once again, I will call this mix. You'll see why. 32 bits. Once again, you'll see why. <laughs> so we could just have a bunch of textures here. Like one texture that will move the vertices, one texture for the mask, one texture for the little bars that we saw in here. Oh, and once again, another texture for those big lines. But yeah, that wouldn't be very optimized because that would be four textures and that's a lot. So the way I will do this is that I will have only one texture and for each of those channels here, red, green, blue, and alpha, we will have, well, one texture for each channel. And we'll see how. So we have our TGA here. Well, this is the PSD, but because we have different layers, but I'll take this one here. And you can see that we have one, two, three, four channels here. Alpha not being used, it's all white. So for now, we only care about the red, the verte vertex offset one. So we'll start with that in the shader. So first, let's take our mix texture here. Let's put it down. And just so you can see, what it does, we do that. We'll create a new material so that we can see it under our mesh. And let's call it once again Aurora. And yeah, create a new folder once again, materials. And Aurora here. And let's just drag and drop. So yeah, this is <laughs> way too much, <laughs> of course. So we just have to multiply it by a value here which would be uh, just this for displacement or VO for vertex offset, since displacement is something else. And let's call it strengths. And we start with 0 0.1. Multiply this by this and here. Okay, so it's still really extreme, but that's what we want. So. We just have to change it here, like 0 0.05. Maybe that's a bit too small. Yeah, that's more like it. 50. Okay, so it's still very static, of course. And also, we don't want, I'll do, that, I'll do this right away, we don't want this to go down because the way our rubber is work is that. I don't know if you can see it. Aura Borealis uh, Atmosphere. 
yeah, that they move over the Earth's atmosphere. So from our perspective on Earth, they are flat. They are just flat as if moving on the sky itself. Like maybe this one. Yeah, you can see here they are pretty much flat. Not exactly because it's plasma. It's something in the atmosphere, so it's not exactly flat, but it's pretty much flat. So here what this does is that it says, OK, I want those, those edges to move one in this direction and one in this direction, which is why it goes that way and not just that way. So what we'll do is that we'll say, OK, we only want them to move in that direction. So for this, we just need to create a new vector, recreate this vector. And for this, we just create an append. And what it does is that it takes one value for the first part of the vector, and I think it should be whoop, here, rather, and then another value for the other part of the vector. So what we have now is a two uh, values vector here. And now it's a little bit, it moves just on the left, which is what we want. Okay. So next step, because this is okay, <laughs> so this is, that's a start, but nothing is moving. We want this little thing here to move like this. So what we'll do, first of all, so that we don't forget, is to make sure that it's not only back face curling, because, well, if you are like this and we don't see this side, it's a bit sad. So we'll say double sided and compile. Okay, so that now we can see both sides of it. Then, well, I'll just take this thing here and this, because this will use a lot. We'll create a panel. So, Intruder Forger is already a panel thing. So, we can just use that, but it's pretty limited because we cannot edit that in the properties here. So, we'll just create our own panel. So, the way you do this is just you will need UV coordinates, so just press U and select UV coordinates. Put it here too, so that because we'll use it a lot. And then we just need to create two values. Value 1 will be VO for vertex offset, speed U. And then another one, VO, speed V. I already know that it's going to be new, so I can put the start on, I don't know, 0 0.1, I guess. Should be fine. And then we need to append, oh, not add, append those two values. Here and here. Then we need to say that it will, they will be multiplied by the time in the game so that those values are moving with the time. And then we just need to add this result here to our UVs so that the UVs will move alongside the mesh, basically. And then just take the result here and put it in here. So we can already see if you have a real time node rendering activated and when it works, <laughs> we see here that they are already moving, which is what we want. And here you can see that the mesh is actually undulating. Yay, nice, that works. So just to make it clean, we just put this here and this in here. That we know that this is our vertex offset part of the shader. And here is just some additional <laughs> calculation for it. Put this here, this, uh, let's put this here too. Okay, all good. Then we will need a mask because, well, as you can see here, and maybe, yeah, this one would be good. So you can see there that it's uh, it's masked, that it's not just a hard cut like we would have if we started right now. And here it's also faded out. And also here you can see that most of them have 
a pretty stronger um, side at the bottom, which is where it's actually into the atmosphere. And so we'll try to make that by using just a simple static mask. So we'll create this new texture here. So create a new file, 52, invert, control I, control shift N for a new layer, and we'll just paint that in. So well, let's say I want this to be something that starts pretty strong at the end, at the beginning, sorry and then slowly fades out. So I just start with this here. And let's fill it with white. Control backspace to fill. Size it a bit. And then we'll blur it quite a lot. Maybe, yeah, 20 cents sounds about right. Yeah. Then maybe we'll play a bit with the, the opacity at the end. Let's say I want to erase uh, maybe a bit more here. Okay. Make sure most of the space is used. Then let's remove it yet again a bit. And then we'll paint the bottom of this in white. Paint, maybe not max, but yeah. Of course, if you, if you have your tablet, you can paint it actually here. I only have my mouse. I, I should plug my tablet someday. <laughs> I just always forget. But I mean, it's fine. So let's just say that we can have something like that. That's, that's not about right. Now, Control Alt F in the new Photoshop version to reapply the glow, but uh, the blur. But that's a bit too strong. So let's modify it a bit. Okay, that's a better. And now let's apply yet another whoops, layer here. Ah, okay. And yet another one. Okay, now let's just merge those, duplicate them, Alt, drag and drop. Remove this just to make sure we don't lose this. And let's add yet some more blur to this. Okay, now if you want, you can add more details to this if you want something precise. Here, I just want something very abstract. I don't really have any um, anything in mind to special, so I just want to have something that just slowly fades out at the end. So maybe more like this. Yeah, that's more like it. Then maybe a last blur. I use Gaussian blur a lot. I find it extremely useful. Okay. So let's save this. Or rather, let's copy this. Control A and Control Shift C to select everything. And then let's go into our mix texture, into channel, into green and Ctrl V. So that the red is still the same, but the green channel is now this texture. Since it's only black and white anyway, it works. Now you can see the RGB, of course, looks a bit weird, but that's fine. So let's just Ctrl S this, go back into Unity, and you have here, it's changed already. So all we can do now is just create a new texture 2D, like this one. Let's attribute the texture here. No need to create a panel because this will be our uh, static mask. And then let's just say that we want this into emissive. Let's see how it looks like here. First of all, let's change the blending. Instead of opaque, we want it to be additive, of course, because it's light. <laughs> Okay, so we just have to rotate this. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. And a bit more pixels. Yeah, that's more like it. So for some reason, it's not exactly what I expected. Which is interesting. 
Let's go back here to see the UVs. Aha! That is why. So I just have to select the UVs here and put them here. So yeah, just I went a bit too fast, <laughs> sorry. So the way you do this, just select your mesh, go into this symbol, it's the uh, UV editor. Well, I have to control Z this. So that's what you have. Then you can just select those lines, uh, those vertices, press X and keep it pressed and then move it that way. So that there is, um, how do I say that? They stay on the grid so that they don't move. Like if you do like this, you will have some of the texture that bleeds on the, that side and it's, it's not good. So yeah, make sure it's right there. Then just select your mesh again, export selection, and Aurora Plane. Yes. Oh, that was loud. Sorry. <laughs> then go back here and okay. So now, okay, now we can just put it back to 90. Okay. In this direction. Oops, sorry. Now we can just do this. 180. And we can just change that here. Or we can just, oh, I'll just keep this here. And I'll just put minus one here. Okay. Okay, okay. So yeah, you may want to edit the texture so that it fits your need more. But yeah, for this tutorial, I think it's good enough. Just compile this. Okay, so now we will need to add the small bars, like the small indentation in the overall. Well. Let's just create a new texture once again. Here, Control I, Control Shift 10, and well, I just create oh, a bit more opaque, uh, not that opaque. Some lines here, a bit here, a bit more here, 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 here. Oops. And then maybe let's have a few uh, a bit stronger. Then maybe a few that are. A bit weaker, but that's uh, a bit too big. Okay, well, this blur, let's add some motion blur to this so that they are a bit prettier. <laughs> okay, do it once again. And you have your little indentations there. Just Control A, Shift C, Control Shift C, and let's put it into the blue one. You can see that's good. Control S. Let's add this here. So now those we want them to move. So we we'll just create a new panel. Uh, I'll just let just me let me just <laughs> move the time here so that since. This is also something that we use a lot. And let's just copy this over here. And let's put that at the top. And let's create yet another texture 2D. Put the texture here. So the multiply is with the time and the add is with the UV coordinates. And let's put this in here. Now we just want simply to add this one to this one. Emission. And here you can see that they are indeed moving. Though I have to rename this and let's call it indentations speed u and here indentations speed v to make sure. So Well, here it seems way too fast for me. So 0 0.03. Okay. But hmm, now it's, I mean, it's okay, -ish, but 
I don't really see the... Like, it's only an add, and... Well, here it's not really an add, right? It's more of a multiply, because we can see here it's darker than here, for example. Because those indentations are creating darker parts. So, instead of add, let's use a multiply instead. So, green, blue, and me save. Okay. And that's already a lot better. So, hmm, I feel, I feel like those ones are maybe a bit too strong. So, what we can do is just create an add. Whoops. An add with a value. And let's say indentation uh, add. I don't really know how else I could call that. Let's use this here. Let's start with 0. 0.5. Okay. And now you can see that if we change this. Well, we can go already too bright. <laughs> I don't want that. But we can say, okay, if I put 0. I just don't want to see the mask at all. But just a bit more, maybe like this. Maybe a bit, more, a bit less. 0.15. But we can still feel the line be below that. That's that's good. I like this. Okay. Uh, then what else do we need? We need to see the bigger lines, like the very tall ones. And just to make sure we can see the difference, I'll make this smaller. A bit more like this, maybe. Yes. Control Shift A, uh, Control A, Control Shift C to mix the load channel. Control, C, uh, Control V, Control D to deselect, Control S to save. Okay, that's more like it. And also, I'll make this. So R and yeah, that's that's better already. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also, save your scene. <laughs> let's call it. Uh, let's create a new folder scene and let's call it three. Oh, right, right. Just simply like that. Okay. Now I want the big lines. Let's create a new one. And those big lines will be. About the same, maybe just a bit more defined. So let's just create those ones here. Oh, I can do this, just like that. It works. And let's fill that with white. Duplicate. Add some, oh, not that. Some glow. Then maybe let's, let's make this a bit smaller. And maybe let's make it not as defined. Yep, and maybe more like this. Maybe more like this too. Yay, that's better. Now let's just merge those. Control E to set uh yeah, control E <laughs> to merge the two layers. And let's duplicate it once again. Let's just have this one at 50% opacity. Let's press 5 and let's make this wider also with more blur. Maybe 5 or maybe 10. 10. But this one, let's put it at 10 opacity. And yeah, this one, let's put it back to 100. Maybe this one a bit more. This one a bit less. It's just a lot of tweaking. You can change that later if you want. Let's just have something that works first. Okay, now let's merge. So let's merge those once again, and let's duplicate it. So Alt just to duplicate it like that, and Alt Shift so that it stays in the same axis. Just move it here, and let's make it smaller. Maybe maybe like that. Maybe up, and then let's create another one. That would be. Once again, a bit smaller and maybe a bit closer too. Yeah, sounds about correct like that. Control, uh, control, Alt, Shift, 
an E to create a merge copy of the whole document. As you can see here. And once again, let's add another blur. Bigger this time in lighten and save 5, 50%. But we have something that glows and that's a bit prettier. So now just Ctrl A, Shift C, put it back into here and just put it into alpha channel here. Once again, let's just save this here and we'll just create yet another panel here. Let's just duplicate this here. And let's call this lines speed u and lines speed v. Okay. Let's put time back into this, uv back into this. Let's create a new texture 2D. Now let's move this back here so that we have room for it. Texture into the texture and the UVs into the UVs. Now let's just this and let's add this alpha. Uh, maybe this one, I want it to be an add. Emission here. And let's just invert the speed minus point zero eight five. I don't know. be a bit less three, maybe even two, maybe. Okay. So now, hmm, I mean, it's a start, but yeah, it doesn't really look good. At least not to me. So what we'll do? First of all, I need to check why. This is doing that. Green. Okay, there's no UV trench. Interesting. Okay, what? Well, seems to be working. For some reason. I had a small glitch here. Yeah, you can see here. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I, I need to add it before I multiply it to the mask, obviously, because if I don't do that, well, it will just ignore the mask. So let's just delete that, create a new add, alpha here, and I'll just do this to this. But I added this to this, but it's still before the mask, which is here, and back into emission. And now it does not show anymore. <laughs> ah. Why doesn't it work? You know what? I'm just gonna add this. To this. And then just multiply it here. Mission. Huh. Well, let's add a multiply with the value. And let's say it's lines strengths. Let's put two at first, here, and here. Nope. Yep, nope, that's correct. Okay. Okay, okay. Now we can see that those are kind of working. We can change this to be a bit stronger. Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. That's that works now. That, now that works how I wanted it. Okay, <laughs> back on tracks. <laughs> so now you notice that well, they are really stretched out because it's a long mesh and it, all the textures are just stretched, uh, stretched out. <laughs> so 
What we can do first, we can simply use the tiling here. So of course that's not this one, it's this one. But of course all the textures are, well, tiling at the same, with the same values. So we just end up with very, very noticeable repetition here. And the mask is also uh, repeating, and we don't want that. So back to one. And what we can just do, simply that, we just multiply those uh, end results for the, the EVs by a new vertex, uh, vertex, uh, what's it called again? A vector <laughs> that we create with, once again, two values, just like here. So let's just say lines tile here, and another one lines tile V. Let's put one and one, and actually I already know it's gonna be you, so we can start, let's say with four, multiply those, uh, no, append first, or let's forget the append here, then multiply here. And here we have our result here for this one. Put this here at the top, okay. Let's move it up a bit so that we have room for the other one. And once again, let's create two values. Let's say uh, indent, whoopla, indentation style U and indentation style B. Let's say three and one here, append. Oops. And multiply this by this, and the end result goes in here. For the mask, we don't need to do that because we only want it to be on the entirety of the mesh. And well, we can do this for the vertex of Z, I guess. So let's do it again. Uh, not, yeah, value. PO tile U and value oh, VO tile V. Okay. Once again, append. Then multiply this by this and this to this. Okay. So it's getting a bit, well, just a bit <laughs> more complicated. But at least now we have something correct. We just need to change it here. Let's see the view tile. Let's say 2, maybe 1.5. And the V, just 1. We don't need the V. Okay, now that's already a lot better. I want the lines to be smaller though. Maybe we have to turn the texture for that. Whoop, here. Let's just delete this. And let's say that the first one needs to be tighter. This one too. This one can, just can stay like that. Let's just create a new glow. In lighten. Let's just see here to the alpha. And control S. Okay, that's already better. Now I want... Uh, which one is this? Here? Now that's better. That's a lot better now. Okay, we are almost done, actually. So, let's open the shader again. Now I just want to add the colors. So there are different ways to add the colors. Um, we could just multiply the result here by just the texture which would work, but I see that could work just fine. But I want it to be a bit more flexible. So we'll use a lerp. So I always make mistakes with lerps. I don't know why, <laughs> but this, I'll, I'll try to get it right for the first time. <laughs> I'll try. So first of all, we need a lerp, of course. And for that, we need a slider. Whoops. And uh, let's say color, uh, 
slider. <laughs> I don't know. I want it to be from 0 to 2. And with center at 1. And then I want the result of this multiplied by the slider to be the thing that will control the interpolation between the two colors. So the way it will work is that we will have one first color here. Let's call it color one. Let's say it's going to be blue because blue is awesome. And then, uh, no, C color two color two. Uh, let's say uh, pinkish because why not? And let's slurp this with this. So this, the way this will work is that it will take the gradient and black will be blue and white will be pink. You can change those colors as you want, of course. But let's just multiply it then. Let's change this to this. I can already see here that kind of already what we want. Now, of course, those colors were not the best choice. <laughs> I mean, it's pure fluo pink, but if we change them a bit. And also, if we change this. Ah, huh, interesting. If I put zero. Hmm. Mm hmm. Put zero here. This does not work. Let's say that instead of using this, I will try to be using this. What would it look like? Of course, it doesn't really work. Hmm. But, if I multiply this again... Yes, that's what I want. And then... We'll modify the colors later, of course. <laughs> Let's just add an emissive strength, so that we can make it glowier, if we want. Let's start with 1.5. Here, here. Emission. Ah, okay. And now... Yes, if we change that, we can go from one color to the other. Now, let's just change those colors, because it's really ugly. Uh, let's say this one here, and this one should be more like this. Mm. Yeah, that's already a lot more like this. Just so we can get a good uh, a good look at this, maybe we'll remove the skybox or maybe we create a new one, new one. So create new material. Let's call it the skybox. It's gonna be a very simple one, just so we get the dark sky. So shader, skybox, procedural. Let's already put it here so we can see the result. Sun size. We don't need any sun size, atmosphere thickness. Ah. Just a tiny bit, just to say that we have something. The ground, we don't want ground, so just black. Okay, now that's already looking a lot better now. Let's make it a bit bigger. Let's create more undulations. Okay. Hey, interesting. So of course we have to modify the texture because here you can see that it's flat and that's because in this one we have all this that's really black or maybe all this that's really white. I'm not sure which one would be more likely to be the culprit. I guess yeah, it's white because it's the part that moves on the left. And uh, so yeah, we can just change that. And for this, let's go back in here. Just make it a bit tighter. And let's just add more Gaussian blur. 
where you want it to be as wide as possible. Not that wide though. I still need a bit of pure dark on the sides just to make sure. Okay, a bit more. Okay, that's that looks a little better already. And now change levels that we get as much information as possible in that. Ctrl A, Ctrl Shift C, and put it into the right one. Ctrl S. Yeah, it's already better. Well, of course, you could spend a lot of time just tweaking the texture just to get something that's perfectly what you want. But, I mean... We can also change the tile a bit. 2.5. Well, of course. I mean... <laughs> That's a bit too much. 1.85. And also, that's that's moving way too fast for an Aurora. Ah, no, that's the speed here. 0, 25, 05, maybe. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay. So, well, that's basically it. <laughs> now, to get the feel a bit more for it, we would have to tweak this for a long time and just to have the right textures, the right values, and then we can also add a little post process, which will be interesting to check. So first of all, let's put this here so that we can see the camera. Now let's put the camera into something that's a little bit more interesting. So just take the camera, move it around until you get a nice angle. Yeah, uh, maybe just something like that, just something simple that works okay and then you will need to download a free plugin an official unity plugin uh, it's called i never remember the name just type in post process and it should be this one post processing stack here does this this plugin it's free just click import well uh, i think it's download first but since i already downloaded it I just have to import it in this project. And what it does is that it adds a bunch of post-process options, which is amazing because it's free and it's pretty, pretty complete, honestly. So let's just wait for it to finish importing the stuff. Okay. Once it's there, you can see you have a new folder, post-processing. And what you just have to do is just click on your camera, add component, and just type in post-processing behavior. Then, we create a new folder here. Let's just create pp for post-process. Create, and where is it again? Post-processing profile. And yeah, once again, just Aurora should be fine. So here you have all the post-processes you can have. You have basic anti-alias, ambient occlusion, depth of field, bloom, which is the one we use, color grading, and a bunch of stuff. Good stuff. So first of all, we don't need fog, so just remove that. Anti-alias, well, it's always good, good to have, so just add it. Unless you need to pay attention to your uh, performances, but in this case, it's all good. So we can go into extreme quality. Then we'll use Bloom. And so we can see the changes we make. Take the main camera and just drag and drop this into the profile. So yeah, that's... Already a lot more interesting now, so let's just put this game here so that we can see a bit better. And also, just to get something more interesting, let's just duplicate this and move this around a bit. Okay, for some reason, <laughs> the thing is different here. I've no idea why. Game? <laughs> what do you do? What is this? Uh, okay. If I have two of them, it does not work for some reason. Okay, interesting. I didn't have that last time I tried, but okay. Well, <laughs> at least it gives you it gives us an opportunity to create a new material, which I just did. So let's just call it 
for red 2. And we can change the colors a bit. Here, maybe we had a little bit greener. Or maybe some oranges. Just so you can see the possibilities of this thing here. Just here. And I don't know, maybe the strengths we can change a bit. Here, speed, 3, 4, 9. Just change some values here and there. Two. Okay. So here we just save the camera. Okay. So back to the post-processing profile. Just a bloom here. If you change the intensity, well, it makes it more glowy. No surprise. What I want to change here is the threshold. I just want it. Well, my friends will certainly make fun of me for, of me for that, but I just want it to be all glowy because. Well, it's an aurora borealis, it's pure light, so let's have it really glowy. Not too intense, but so that we have a nice light that goes around it. Let's put the anti-flicker so that we don't have those big things here that are really annoying. A bit more intense, maybe. Okay. Soft knee. Since it's low intensity and very low threshold, the stuff need doesn't really do much. But we can change that a bit though. It doesn't really change much in this case, but well. The radius would be a bit more intense though. Yeah, more like this. Okay. Then we can change the color grading, which is basically just like a levels. Uh, in Photoshop and saturation, and contrast, and that kind of stuff. So since I like saturation, we can try a bit more saturated. Not too much, but just a bit. Then we can make it a bit more exposed here. We can change the blacks. Change the whites. Whoops. No, oh, whites are fine. Like this. Uh, this one is fine too. White clip, that's for that, so nope. <laughs> Let's put it at 10. Okay, maybe a chromatic aberration. So these are, just as you can see here on the sides, it's the typical video game effect, especially in FPS. Uh, you have that almost all the time. At least, some time ago, <laughs> that was very popular. I don't know if it's still very popular, but well. And then maybe a vignette to make the sides a bit more, a bit darker. Well, that's a bit too much. <laughs> uh, smoothness. Okay, that's more like it. Okay. And then if you want, maybe some grain. Maybe smaller, less intense. That really just depends on what you want, really. I usually play with that a lot, especially when I create a, a small scene, because well, it adds a lot to a to a, a scene because you can see without it, with it, without it, with it, and yeah, it's post processing. It's very effective, especially now that you can see it directly in the editor. And then once you have that, well, you can just modify your scene just as you want. Um, maybe rotate this a bit. Did this one a bit too, uh, make it a bit bigger, change some of the values here, and da, 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 da. until you have just what you want. Add a small sky, add a little environment, and yeah, you're done. <laughs> so yeah, if you have any questions or any ideas for what else we could make, uh, yeah, just leave a comment. And if you like this video, feel free to subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye.